Okay guys, so I am back and this is just a video I want to spell out what I'm gonna be focusing on on this channel moving forward. We had a little detour lately with all the AI news coming out and we just wrapped up our in-person sync up event. With both of these things kind of at the foreground, I am deciding and I'm figuring out now exactly what I wanna focus on, exactly what I wanna highlight and what I wanna spend my time on, on this channel and in Sync Academy and in our community broadly, at least for the next year or so. So I wanna let you guys know what's on my mind, what we're gonna be talking about and what you can expect from me and this channel and our community in the next year, okay? First of all, there's gonna be a lot less AI stuff on my channel. Yes, I devoted probably the last two or three months to it. I feel like I've said what I wanted to say on it. If there's any big, huge stories or things that come out that I think should be uh, known by us and made aware to us, I will make a video here and there, but it's not gonna be an every video kind of thing anymore. I still will fight for our music to be uh, trained on consensually, so that's still something that I'm gonna fight on and fight for privately, uh, but I feel like I've said what I need to say. I've made you guys aware of the risks, the benefits, uh, to the best of my ability, so that's good for some of you guys that have been tired <laughs> of the AI stuff. We are gonna be moving on from it, okay? Secondly, the Sync Up event that we just concluded, there were three main takeaways that I got from that event, and those are the three main takeaways that I'm going to be basically just focusing on entirely on this channel in the next year, okay? Number one, opportunities. There are still amazing and plentiful opportunities out there for producers and composers like you watching this very video right now. I know that sometimes times can feel bleak and especially with AI, especially with feeling like, well, maybe the good days are behind us and I'm too late to the game. Many of us have felt that, I felt that even myself when I got started, even though I got started in 2008. We all tend to have this feeling that like the good old days are behind us and we're sort of late to the party. The success stories that you guys heard from directly, either in person or virtually at that event, I hope showcase to you why the good old days are not behind us. Uh, Anthony Crawford, who was one of our successful sync licensing producers, is following the numbers game strategy that I followed in my career all the way back in 2008. He's only started in the last two or three years and he showed us, he brought out the screenshots of it, the actual printouts, that his royalties went from $250 about a year and a half ago to the most recent BMI check he got, which was nearly $10,000, okay? Now that's not normal, that's not typical, and I almost would tell you, don't expect that, okay? I wanna make sure you guys are very clear. That's a very unusual situation. But just so you guys know, Anthony shared with us exactly how he did that. He's cranking out two to five tracks a week, he let us know. He's working with a few uh, library partners, and most importantly, he's not waiting for them to tell him what they need. He's proactively sending them emails and calls and texts and saying, hey, is this interesting to you? I noticed that this big sporting event is coming up or this big season of something is coming up. Maybe we can try to serve this industry uh, with some of this music. So there is still a great wide open opportunity for some of you guys that do wanna hit that numbers game like I was doing in my career by cranking out tons and tons of high quality tracks on a consistent basis and partnering with high quality libraries. The live and well, you guys heard it and saw it for yourself right there uh, at the event. So that's really cool. But of course, the flip side of that is that we really do also need to be thinking about quality much more than we ever did probably before in our careers. My career was built primarily on the numbers, trying to do as best as I could, but I wasn't the producer that was you know, spending an entire week to get one track done. That was just too slow for me. I wanted to just crank out as many as I possibly could. These days, I think some of you guys, it's gonna make more sense to focus on the quality play and maybe only have 20 to 30 tracks that you release in a year, um, as opposed to the quantity play uh, that Anthony or myself had done in our career. So I can't make that decision for you, and maybe for some of you, you're gonna wanna play a little bit of both, where some of the time you're gonna do a quantity play, other times you're gonna really wanna make sure you take your time with your tracks. So there are still opportunities on both sides of the equation, and we definitely heard success stories from both of those approaches in this business. So we're definitely gonna be focusing on both of those, and I wanna let you guys know you can go in either or both of those directions, okay? So they're still out there, they're still great things. Second takeaway I got, the music was beautiful, and amazing, and emotionally compelling. And some of the best sync music, just even getting rid of sync, some of the best music I have heard in my entire life. And it's not just a sales pitch, I really do mean that. I was emotionally moved, like 
almost to tears in some of the tracks that we were hearing and displaying and showcasing from some of the members there, including the sync up awards that we gave out and many of the members that were showcasing and the library owners that were showcasing what they're distributing and what they're really doing. There is beautiful, amazing, wonderful, incredible music in this industry. And I want to just spend a lot more time thinking about that, um, focusing on that, creating it, um, putting out tutorials on how to create it, interviewing successful composers and producers and songwriters and Emmy winning songwriters uh, that know how to craft really amazing high quality music. And, you know, I want to devote this channel called Sync My Music to a lot more of the musical aspects of this, okay? So maybe um, we've done that a little bit more in the past and we haven't really done so much of that lately. So I really wanna kinda tap back into the whole reason why I got into sync licensing and why many of you guys are doing sync licensing is our love of music and how to basically constantly challenge ourselves to push ourselves to make higher quality music and enjoy the process of creativity. So we're really gonna devote a lot more to that. The third takeaway I got is that there are just amazing and, and beautiful people in this industry. And, you know, I knew that in my career, but you only get to kind of hang out with each other in person so often. So when you do, it's a treat. It's rare. It's a beautiful, wonderful thing. And sync up is an opportunity for us to be able to do that on a consistent basis, hopefully on an annual basis, maybe even more often. But it really got my gears turning this year in terms of we really, I need to, and you guys, I think all really need to really open ourselves up much more to collaboration and working with each other and being more intimately involved in each other's sync licensing careers. I think in my career, I didn't collaborate nearly enough. I had a couple of situations where working with vocalists turned into nightmares, so I decided to not, so, not work so much with other people. But as I was listening to all this amazing, ridiculous, crazy talent that we have in our community, it made me realize that the time of thinking that we can do everything on our own and we're going to be the one stop, we do everything uh, for some opportunities, that can certainly be the case. But I think we are sort of leaving a door shut to an amazing future for ourselves if we don't start to get curious and open to want to potentially start to collaborate with those that are doing amazing things and shining great in their area of expertise and allowing us to really just shine and focus on the one particular thing that we can do very well. And in fact, speaking of that, I am now building a new collaborative tool feature in Sync Academy to make that even more accessible and easy for you guys to be able to find collaborative partners, whether it's a composer, a producer, a vocalist, an instrumentalist, whatever it is that you feel can take your productions to that next level. We're gonna try to help enable those um, collaborations and those partnerships within Sync Academy. I'll make another video about that very soon. But collaboration, 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 that is really going to be another topic that we really head on, uh, hit, hit the head on best practices for how to do that, how to navigate the splits between each other, how to make sure that everybody feels like they are contributing equally. I still believe that a 50-50 split, no matter what you're collaborating on, is usually the best practice, is usually gonna be the best way for you to continue working together with somebody for a long time into the future. But also the benefit of collaborating opens up new doors for you. Like there are other people that are working with publishers and libraries that you've never had access to that a collaboration on a project can get you in the door with new people. So it's definitely gonna not only expand your, um, your musical skills and your quality of your music, but just your network itself by the nature of you just opening up the doors to working with new people. So we definitely need to um, be able to do that, okay? So uh, with that being said, in anything that we're gonna do, whether it's gonna be the quantity play, the quality play, collaboration, any style of music you wanna do, undeniable is the key word that you need to carry with you moving forward. Uh, we heard this from many different library CEOs, from composers, from people that have been in this industry for a long time, and they've heard a lot of sync licensing music, and I've also heard a lot of composers and producers trying to get started in this. Many of them use this exact same word, undeniable. When a library owner, a publisher, a supervisor, anybody clicks play on your track for the very first time and you're pitching to them, you cannot give them an inch of doubt as to whether or not the track could be placeable or licensable or marketable for their project or their clients. Meaning, no more disclaimers, no more, well, this isn't mixed yet, I'm gonna do better once it's mixed. Doesn't fly, okay? No more, well, this is like what I think I possibly could do. Maybe if I got a vocalist, we could take it. You have to seriously remember and realize that nobody is coming to save your career. Nobody's coming to put the polish on your music for you. Nobody's coming to come and mix and master your tracks 
to get them to that level so they're gonna be marketable for these clients. We are living in a very competitive world right now. Sync licensing has become much more popular in the last few years as a result of you know channels like mine and also the pandemic and many other factors. So you have to come to this game and come to these libraries and these publishers with music that is TV ready. Like it has to sound like it belongs on TV. If you're making trailer music, that stuff better sound like it is competitive and on the best with the best of the best out there in this industry. So if you're not currently listening and researching these high quality trailer houses and production libraries that carry high quality trailer music, don't even bother. Like you have to really come to this this, this uh, industry now as an A plus player. Okay, this is not an industry that people can just throw tracks that have been sitting on your hard drive for the last 20 years at and think that something's going to happen. There might have been a time in, in the past where that was possible, but we are certainly living in an era now where quality, 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 quality is getting stepped up more and more and more with all these amazing tools that we have to be able to get any sound we want, help mix and master our tracks ourselves. And you do need to realize that even though we're going to be collaborating much more, you do need to be taking a lot more responsibility for yourself, for the quality of the music, the samples you're using, your mixing and mastering skills, um, how you present yourselves to, to libraries, uh, marketing yourself. That's going to be some of the um, educational stuff that we talk about here uh, as well. You got to take responsibility, 100%. No disclaimers, no excuses. It's this email or this music I'm sending to this library, this publisher is 100% ready to go. And it's the best that I can possibly do at this moment in time. If you can confidently say that to yourself, then definitely give it a shot and pitch your music out there. But if you've got any doubt as to, eh, I don't know, this vocalist might, it's good, but it's not great. And you know that you're maybe hiding that from yourself. Got to get real with yourself and you can't lie to yourself anymore. You really do have to make sure that like, maybe that means I need to work with a different vocalist or maybe that means we need to go do another take at it or I need to change things, whatever you need to do. We need to start just not accepting any excuses for ourselves. And we definitely just bring our best um, to the game, okay? Songwriting is also going to be another element that we include in this, the craft of, you know, the, the art and the craft of uh, making lyrics and melodies and telling stories. These are some of these things that we really need to focus much more on. I've been talking about adding vocals to your tracks in the last two years on this channel, but we really need to focus on, okay, I know I need to make vocals, but how do I make vocals that are syncable and compelling and great to listen to and something that'll jump off the page and really make people want to place my music? That's what we're definitely going to spend a lot more time devoting to uh, some song songwriting uh, boot camps. We're going to do some tutorials about that. I'm also going to be doing some like featuring a spotlight of some really high quality sync licensing music um, with vocals and songs that I'm going to show you why I feel this is a really high quality example of a sync hit song. Um, so we're going to definitely be diving into those uh, topics as well. So. Hopefully, at the end of this video, you can get some uh, clarity on what I'm going to be focusing on. Hopefully, you feel excited as well for what we're going to be going um, and what, what journey we're going to be going on together. And just know that wherever you line up in this, for the quality, the quantity, the style of music, vocals, no vocals, whatever it is we want to do, just know that all of us have to continuously up our game in this business. That is not an option. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you're doing, how long you've been doing that, how new you are to this. If you're not ready to kind of go back to school, so to speak, and keep getting better and improving your craft and, and honing your skills, I'll just be honest, this, this is an industry that will absolutely leave you in the dust because people and composers and library owners and composers are all getting better and better and better as time goes on. I have witnessed it. I have seen it myself from the beginning of my career all the way up until the last eight years of this YouTube channel. I have seen the quality of producers and composers just go up and up and the catalogs that I'm recommending and the libraries that I'm recommending to you guys and the CEOs that I'm connecting you guys with are just getting better and better and better as well. So if that doesn't sound interesting to you and you're just kind of, eh, for fun, I want to throw my music out there, Maybe stock licensing is a better fit. Maybe there's other places where you can try to, you know, monetize your music or do something else with it. Sync is definitely squeezing us right now. It is squeezing us. And I, I believe for the better. Again, this is happening for us, not to us. Uh, but with all these different factors, AI included, I think what we're going to see is we're going to see a squeezing of the tube and you're going to just see the cream rise to the top here. That's what I foresee happening. And for some, it might not work out so well because constantly challenging yourself and getting yourself better and pushing yourself to do more is not easy. It's not an easy thing to do. And that's why I do anticipate a lot of people will not want to continue on with sync licensing, which is not new. I've been doing this for a long time. 
Most people give up. That's just sort of the story, the tale as old as time. But for the few of you, the very small number of you that feel like you're gonna stick with it, you've been sticking with it this far, AI hasn't scared you out of the game, what I've said in this video hasn't scared you out of the game, then join along. Uh, I really, really want you to be a part of this with us and I want to get your feedback and your notes and your comments and I really want to know if what I'm doing here on this channel is making a meaningful impact in your sync licensing career. So definitely don't be shy. Always comment and always email me, jesse at syncmymusic.com. This is a conversation. It is not a soapbox. It's just not me preaching up here. I really want to make sure that we are obviously conversating and talking back and forth as often as we possibly can. So. That's what you guys can expect from me. That's what we're going to be doing in the next year here on the channel.